What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Dima Podcast. It's Neela. And it is Adis. What's up, familia? What's re- what a day. Shit, what a day, bro. The energy. Energy on a all-time high. You guys, like... It's, like, electrifying. It's electrifying, bro. It's electrifying. And I really... I think it's, like... I think you should be and surround yourself with that type of energy. And when we say energy, TDP family, we mean, like... Vibration. Vibration to the point where, like, you are understanding with somebody and you're collaborating with somebody. And I don't know, bro. Just be around people that make you feel good. Yeah. I feel like we're these... Again, we're these characters in this big ass movie of ours you feel me mm-hmm. where like we're constantly developing and our characters are developing and our actions are what chooses how which direction we're gonna go you feel me yeah and sometimes so, characters in movies die they d- <laughs> they fucking get off you want to off that character they had to get rid of that character yeah there's Your, no season two the script got cut <laughs> so it's just like some, the main character gotta keep going yeah the main you know? character gotta keep going and that's Wild. what i mean and a lot of people you either let and this is going back to our second topic that we kind of wanted to go into. It's yeah, like, what was that question? Like, who, the person you're aspiring to be, because I feel like, again, I don't live for, and I know this might seem out of whack, and I know I'm all over the place, bro, but I'm also, as much as I'm in the present moment, I'm also looking at my future self in a way where I want to do my future self a solid, right? Yeah. I'm like, I want to do him a service, bro. I want to be like, I got you, P. You so I have me? a question for you. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think that you're obviously like one of the coolest people I know. I love you, bro. And like what you're doing today you know. in terms of the podcast is I feel like who you, what you've always been meant to do. Yeah. Because this is so you. Yeah. And like you're so good at it. But I knew you growing up as someone who was always behind the scenes, someone who hated being photographed, someone who hated being in front of the camera, was not that like you were always like that people oriented like individual who like drove conversation but like you were never like inspired to like want to be on social media you were never that person who like was out there publicly yeah very private i'd say you're still Still, very private which is important i'm learning that i'm learning for most aspects in your life you should be but um and i feel like you're the best version of yourself today and what was blocking you what and what not only what stopped you at that time yeah and then what got you here? I feel like, again, going back to the like, what's holding you back from being that person that you aspire to be or what led me to this like place of just being on camera and like yeah. loving this shit and having a purpose and like, you know. Because I, this is your purpose. Exactly. You're meant to do this. Yeah, 100%. I feel Which it. Which is ironic because you hated it. I hated it, right? So how, what changed? I feel like. I don't know. Again, I think it's back to this whole like character development of like within myself, right? Like I always aspired to be a better version of myself and I always wanted to like be the best me, but I didn't realize what was stopping me from being the best me, bro. Like Cassandra, sometimes I'd be thinking about it and I'm like, so what like stops someone's growth of like living to their potential? Like say you want to be this guy that's like, a tank you look like a fucking tank you're 185 of pure muscle and like whatever whatever and then that person just never gets to that point of their life or they never have abs and like what got them to do that right how probably it was maybe they couldn't battle them being lazy they couldn't wake up and do cardio they couldn't do this because of the i think there's these like mental blocks that we all have on each other right or on ourselves i feel like and surpassing that and pushing past it is one of the biggest things in life and being able to push past it instead of being lax about it and not being like, you know what? Like, it is what it is. I am the way I am. Uh, This is life and life is what it is. No, bro, you gotta keep pushing and wanting to be better. Maybe it was like pressure too. Because maybe not in today's day and age because now it's like being a content creator and entertainer, influencer, some may say, is actually something that a lot of people are, is not normalized. But like when we were growing up, our college days, like, you know, when you were more like um, just like not as in the public, I I feel like maybe the pressure of just kind of having all this like this idea of who you need to be versus mm-hmm. what you wanted to be and not being that person. So having nothing to portray for it was also the case because for me, it was always like. I was always comfortable being out and about, but like, and like showing my life. But like, I always was also like, well, who am I? Like, I was trying to figure my who I was. And I, and I saw like everybody kind of in their development aspects of their life and like college, all these things. And I was like, 
you know, I, I actually do want to do this. So I want to have a purpose when I do it. And it's like it allowed me to start getting more comfortable with who I was and showing that more versus just a selfie that had no purpose behind it. You know, it was more like, no, I meant I actually enjoy school. I want to go to school and no, I want to work. I have always had this work ethic. You know, it's like getting comfortable with, a, I think, accepting who you are and then showing that to the world because growing up like in our environment it was always so much pressure like you got to do this you got to go to school you got to be this you got to study this you're going to go to law school all these things and it was never like that's not what we realistically wanted mm-hmm. yeah I, it was I'm, pressure yeah 100 percent. that think takes a toll it. it does it does take a toll on your like mental and your psyche and you're and not so- able to be who you want to be exactly and i feel like the re- and that's damn bro you just have me maybe have a, a moment because like i'm thinking about it now right and the first step of that was like I would say the first step of me kind of fulfilling my purpose and understanding my purpose in this world was the effort stage. Yeah. It was like the, okay, I know I don't want to be a lawyer. I know there's so much pressure on me because my dad, my parents are very successful. Like, like, you know, there's all of this pressure on me, right? Mm -hmm. To the point where like, I knew I had anything. I can do whatever I want, bro. Yeah. I can go and I can fucking study my ass off, take the LSAT, get it to take the bar, probably fail it three times, <laughs> pass that bitch at the end and yeah. become a lawyer, right? But right. it's not like... But is that who you want to be? But that's not who I wanted to be. And once I realized that, it was a very humbling moment in my life where it was a very scary road, right? Because yeah. it, it was like, there's a couple of roads you can go on, right? It's like, do what is is safe, do what everybody wants you to do or do what's fucking not safe, treacherous, no idea where it's going, but it's, you have a sense of purpose mm-hmm. and you're driven behind it. Right. Mm-hmm. And the first step of me getting to the person I wanted to be, I would say is like f- saying, fuck it. Yeah. And sometimes that means saying not necessarily fuck it, but like telling your parents, like I got it, but saying fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> like bro, dead ass, bro. When once I realized like why I was why I'm doing what I'm doing and my sense of purpose and it was it was good that I got I I got into a job I started working yeah. right and I made fucking money I know right I was making stupid money and then I was like oh shit the money don't really mean shit no the money don't really mean shit and then I was like okay what's stopping me of being from who I want to be like I don't want to be somebody. And I make small goals for myself too. And sometimes I don't hit those goals and I'm not hard on myself about it. I'm definitely um, conscious when Mm -hmm. I don't hit my goals, but it's like, okay, that sucks. You're kind of slipping on your pimping. You feel me? Get back on track. You know what I'm saying? Get back on track. Get back on it. It's never like, oh, like this happened. Well, fuck, like I just kind of sit here and just wait months until I figure out another solution. Nah, bro, like I'm on, on my P's and Q's about it. And I feel like- Yeah, that's good. That's a big thing. The fuck it the, and wanting to do better, bro. And then just like the, the keep going mentality. Keep we going. spend so much time focusing on our failures mm-hmm. that before you know what months have passed and you are now pushed back. You're not, you know, like things happen, shit happens. It, it, it's out of our control that- keep going mentality like just keep it pushing because every day is different thoughts are just thoughts they'll pass like keep that momentum because that will also allow you to like look past shit and like be able to be the best version of yourself and i feel like to your point exactly when you get to that space you're like i don't give a fuck about what you think i'm gonna do me it is it feels great like it feels great because society does a horrible job at having a stigma about who you one how one should be mm-hmm. what lifestyle they should have who their friend type should be what their relationship should be like their career path it's like it's not your life yeah. i don't give a fuck about who says what on social media and what what's identified as that perfect lifestyle i want if i want to get up and like dress a certain way and i want to go eat what i want to eat or i want to look a certain way i don't care and that's just who i am and that right there is you being your authentic self Caring yeah. less about the perception people have of you. I think that's the biggest blocker. And just focusing on, I feel like doing this today. If I feel like fucking putting a, a, a clown suit on one day, I'll put a clown suit on. And if I feel like wearing a, a fucking dress, the fu- like it's whatever I'm in, my head space is at, you know, like being your the best version of yourself, whatever that may be. And keep it. Genuine. Those are the most artistic and creative people, too. Yeah. 100%. And intelligent. Yeah. 
and they move a certain type. I ain't gonna wear no clown suit though. I ain't no clown. That you was a no horrible cl- example. <laughs> I'll wear I it for you. I can name some clowns. You could name some clowns. I can name some clowns. I know you're thinking about some clowns. <laughs> yeah. But so. But you feel me? I feel you, and I feel like I think that's a, the biggest takeaway in all this. Now, now that I'm thinking again, like. I would, we didn't sit here and give you, like, we don't have the answer when going in this podcast. Like, bro, we're really chopping it up with y'all. You yeah. need to figure out what the answer is, bro. <laughs> Straight because up, let in us all know. honesty, bro, I think that was like the old, like the deciding factor on me being so, and it gave me the sense of juice, bro. So right when I was transitioning out of high school, again, the pressure of being in high school and being an athlete in high school and having this image of the football player exactly. where like all the girls are like, oh, like, I wanted to be my best at all times and I didn't want me to get caught slipping in pictures, videos, none of that because I felt like that dude right. in high school. Like, I, towards the latter end of my high school career, like, I knew a lot of people. A lot of people loved me, you know what I'm saying? And I, my coaches loved me and fucking, like, it's like the typical movie shit, you feel me, where you're just getting barred because you're, right? And I fed into it and then I played college football, right? And as I'm, as I'm going to college, I'm realizing... Nobody really gives a fuck. Literally. Right? No one really, everybody's so focused on their lives that even if they do give a fuck and they hate on you for like 10 seconds, someone else is going to do some boof ass shit and they're going to focus on that guy. You feel me? Or that girl. So like right when I stopped giving a shit about what people thought, like it gave me this different type of energy and juice inside because it gave me like, I does what I want. And I don't give a fuck. And people start fucking with that. Yeah. You feel me? Because it's like this. I'm not doing. I'm doing this because I think it's dope. I'm doing this because I want to do it. And I'm doing this because I feel good doing it, bro. Like, I don't know, bro. Like, I've been. I don't know. Bro, when you're in that headspace. It's fucking crazy to think about. It's getting me excited, I'm telling you right now. I want to do better and be better every day. But you are. Like, you're the greatest of all time. And you're only getting greater. But let me tell you, when you're in that mentality, all these creative juices start flowing. And it starts to, it it comes out and people are attracted to that. And, like, you get in, your talent starts showing. Things start surfacing that you don't even know you have the ability because you're allowing yourself to let that version of you out versus portraying something you're not and you don't want to. Be. Yeah, bro. That's so much harder. Yeah, it is. It's so much more challenging. You don't want to be on camera. You don't want to take photos because you're supposed to be this big jock at yeah. in high college football. Granted, you were a great football player. Yeah. Realistic. And even college is like a fine line because people still kind of give a fuck. Yeah. Like, are you going to master's? Are you getting your master's? Are you going to law school or do- are you going to be a doctor? Yeah. No, bitch. I'm just going to fucking get this B, this fucking B bachelor's and that I'm already struggling to get. Yeah. Like, it's like. And fuck off. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care because I'm going to still be the greatest of all time in my own eyes because mm-hmm. I'm living my life how I want to live versus what I how people want me to live. And, bro, isn't it crazy to see, like, I, I find it so crazy to see people transition from the oh, wanting yeah. to be. Yeah, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, it's so funny. And I, I, I told you about that story. Yes, bro. Like, valedictorian or some shit of high school. Everybody was like this bitch, like the head honcho yeah. got into all the u- schools you can imagine. And I went to community college. I literally didn't even apply because I knew like I was like high school, went through it and then like worked at KFC. We'll honor that till the day I die. It shaped me to who I am today. Um, I remember ran into her. It was like a year after we all graduated high school. And she was like, remember I told this yeah. story? And she was just like, oh, like, how are you? You're still a jack in the box. And I was like, no, it's actually KFC. <laughs> And I'm a supervisor there. Motherfucker. And um, I was in community college, bullying you and I, not knowing what we're doing, whatever. And then recently heard from this individual around how, and it was just, it was wild because they reached out and they, they were seeking advice from me. Full circle. On just like what I'm doing currently and kind of things that they were interested in doing that I've done. And I was like, absolutely. Like, this is great. Cause all my life I thought like, I always, you had your shit together. You were going to Ivy Leagues. You were going to medical school. All these things, you know? So it's like, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And I feel like... It does not matter. That, But the thing is, it does in those times when people are going through these things. Yeah. And they're going through these... I feel like you always got to... Like, I go through experiences every day, bro, where it's one of those moments where I'll be talking to someone. I'll see something do some... I'll see someone do something that kind of is like... I wouldn't do or something, yeah. but it would always almost make me feel like I was that 
oh, it's just like yeah. that. They gonna learn. They gonna learn one day. Isn't that wild? And I'm not gonna younger, let it. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not gonna let it bleed into what I'm doing. But it's like one of those moments. Like I feel you on that. Like I, we have one of our family members that's like super self conscious about their weight. Yeah. Right. Never wants to <clears throat> take off uh, his shirt. Never wants to do anything. Like it, it's just like something that bothers him. Right. Mm-hmm. And we're on a hike. I'm like, bro, take your shirt off, bro. Yeah. I'm like, take it because I knew he was hot. Like hot but he just didn't want to do it yeah. and we we're on a hike you feel me and no one gives a fuck right and he did he took off his shirt and this was like months back right he took takes off his shirt right he's bullet and now i swear to god till this day bruh is always taking his shit off and I going crazy that. and i he had a conversation with me he was like i these like that day that you're like bro i just thought about it and i was like fuck it I'm, Fuck it. I'm never going to see these hikers a day in my life. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. Yeah. And it, it was happened to a guy that was like a little overweight. You can tell he's a little overweight. Was walking shirtless right past us. He was yeah. like, I don't give a fuck. And that guy probably had a moment within himself yeah. that was like, same deal. And he was like, yeah. fuck it. And I that literally. Just, you feel me? Bro, like I, this is a fun story to tell. And I'm going to tell it because I was the advocate for it. And I, it's, yeah. a, it's for Kenneth to tell. But I'm going to share it. Shout out Kenneth. So we were at, at the mall. Yeah. And we had we were shopping around. We, before we started shopping, we went to Starbucks. This is recently. And um, there was this hot ass guy. This guy was like hot. Me and Kenneth, obviously Kenneth being gay, also into him. We're like, I'm like, go, I'm like, like this guy's kind of hot. He's like, yeah, he's kind of hot. But we're like, is he here for you or is he here for me? We couldn't tell. <laughs> then this guy like lifts his wrist up. He like to pick a cup. Or, he was working there, and I saw a rainbow uh, Apple Watch. So then I look at Kenneth like, it's all you, bro, right? So then we're like walking around. He goes to Gucci, buys a big ass Gucci bag. He has like the biggest possible Gucci box that they have. So he's just walking around, stunning, like whatever. And on the way back, he's like, dude, that guy's hella fine. I was like, I want you to go give him your, your number. Write it down on a piece of paper and hand it to him because no one does these things anymore. Like, this is not a thing. And he's, like, tripping out, like, no, I don't want to. And I was like, I went and I got a receipt from, like, one of the restaurants. I wrote his number down, and I said, go hand this to him. They were closing. And he was like, I want to, but, like, I don't. That's weird. And I was like, why is it weird? Like, he has no idea who you are. He doesn't know your name. I'm the one who gave the, my name for the drinks. Like, he doesn't even know your name. And the worst that could happen is, like, he never contacts you. Whatever. But, like, reality is you'll feel so much better giving it to him versus going home wishing you did. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you keep – and I was, like, realistically, you want to do this, but, like, you're just anxious. You're overthinking it. And I'm, like, hyping him, right? And I'm, like – because this guy, Kenneth, he's just so funny. And I'm, like, you drive a Tesla. Like, you you make six figures, Ken. Just go fucking give him your number, right? And I'm, like, encouraging him to do, like, do this. And he's just, like, not into it. And then he goes, the poor guy goes, and Starbucks is closed. They were closing. So I'm like, hello for He was like, they're closed. And I'm like, knock on the door, this poor guy, right? And I'm like, Tesla, you drive a Tesla. Like, I'm like hyping him, yeah. right? And he goes, and he keeps turning around. And he has the biggest Gucci, like he, like he had just bought this big ass Gucci yeah. bo- box or whatever bag and like i'm like just do it and he turns around and he knocks on the door the guy opens he just gives him the card i don't even know what he says and comes back and he was like bro thank you he was like you don't understand how bad i like wanted to do that but like i couldn't get myself to do it and now he's just like i'm like at the end of the day it'll just be a good story to tell but like you did something that you would do but you wouldn't because you're too busy thinking about no one does this or what was what was he gonna think you probably made his day you know so little things like that also so look what's crazy that you say that story right for me, I can just circle back this, uh, this, all of this to me, right? Yeah. I've had a weird, I don't know how to explain it. Like my whole life, bro, you know me. I've never felt uncomfortable yeah. talking to a group of people. Like I'm damn near want to be the center of attention, <laughs> joking, laughing, fucking messing with people. Like even with girls, never was nervous. Like yeah, we'll good. go up to you and just have a fucking full conversation. Like, like nothing. Right. Yep. And I felt like that was something that a lot of people probably don't have like that. Hey, if we're walking through a mall and you see an attractive girl, right? I'll walk up to that girl and be like, hey, my name's Adis. Like, what's up? And I would never feel nervous about it. Right. Some people don't have that. But there's this moment of like, I feel again, how I improve every single day and how i try to improve myself is putting myself in uncomfortable situations that's so nice i put myself in the shits bro like in the shits like damn near i'll give you an example of like with sports right i always made myself feel uncomfortable and do the hardest most fucking like 
fucking craziest sports from MMA to yeah. football to wrestling to jujitsu, hard like crazy sports. To, and I would get into the with the hardest competition to get better, right? With that same thing, when I went to college, bro, like I took pu communications, public speaking, corporate comm, bro. Yeah. Which is like literally every single week you have to stand in front of a class of between 60 kids. Santa Clara was on the lower side of like class sizes. The biggest class size you had was about 60 kids. Yeah. Right? Which still... I was nervous about public speaking, reading an essay in front of a group of kids. I took that shit. I had a conversation with my dad about it. He was like, yo, as a kid, like younger, when I was in high school, he was like, take all the public speaking courses you can. Ironically, we have a fucking podcast now. Weird, I know, right? right? I took digital journalism, fucking broadcast, nice. fucking all of this stuff. So I got into that because I wanted to become a better public speaker. So when I started working, I can convey my message to everybody, get what I want to say out. But bro, when I tell you, when I was up in front of these 60 kids, I was, my hands were sweating. sweating. Like my hands, I was like this, I was like, fuck. And then they would, the teacher would call, the professor would call the name up and then I would go up there and I would like, damn, you're like my, he my heart would be I racing. I hate that feeling. Bro, and I'm like, all these kids are like, st like paying attention to you. You feel me? Yeah. So I got in there. And literally for the whole year, up until I would say like eight classes into the year, I was say, fucking nervous as fuck. By the ninth time, I was like, this shit candy. I'm yeah. making jokes with the professor. I'm talking <laughs> shit. You feel me? I'm talking my shit. So I also believe in order to be the, the person that you want to be in life, mm -hmm. you have to attack those like demons, those uncomfortable parts of yourself that you're like just like you want to do you want to talk to that girl you want to do that but you're just so shy that you can't yeah. then do it yeah. do it a million times until you motherfucking go and put your number in her phone not in a creepy way don't do yeah. no creepy shit you yeah know? but that that's that's exactly it i swear to god if you would have told me like six years ago that i'd be talking to 300 people now giving a presentation and these are like head honchos and like the fucking company I'd be like, I could never. And it, the same thing happened to me. I just got thrown in the deep end with my job one time with like VPs and directors for like some staff meeting and like had to present. And I had to present shit that I was like not familiar with. You, tell me you were not uncomfortable, kind of immediately scared. Yeah. You're like, you don't know what to expect. No matter Nerves how are prepared everywhere. you are, no matter how prepared you are, you're always going to get that. Oh shit, I'm up. I'm yeah. up. Like it's my turn. Yeah. I hate that feeling. Even on Zoom now it happens. Yeah. Like I'm behind a screen, ain't nobody paying attention. Yeah. Let me tell you. Everybody's I, that's, just trying to that's pass. That's what I tell myself. I'm like, half of these people aren't listening. Half of yeah. them don't know what I'm talking about. Another half don't want to be here. Yeah. So it's like that's a good way also. Like public speaking. I had I forgot what I'm trying to think when I became comfortable because I was always afraid of it too, but I don't know. Once you just do it, then you're just like accustomed to it. I think it just like, you know, when they say throw you in the deep end. Exactly. And then you learn how to float. That's literally how That's I exactly how, how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you drown. Or you fucking That's drown. Like, it's probably be a not safe. Day. Have you seen the babies that they'll just throw in the water and they just float back up? It's like <laughs> in, oh, infants. Kicking? Infants. Weird literally six out, bro. months. How I would die. You are not throwing my child in the water. My God. But yeah. I mean, I think just allowing it comes back to this main question, right? Like, what is holding you back from being the best version of yourself? yourself is that right yeah. just i think caring too much just yeah. when you get in that mind of like i don't care it's not about you it's about me i'm gonna do what i want what's an extent like to respect the people you love that can flourish and like go yeah. into something else like right? don't go be a piece of shit yeah don't give a fuck don't not give a fuck too much yeah like give give what not, are we talking don't give a fuck to an extent to an extent where like where, it leads to formally. good positive stuff, <laughs> right? Because like, like that allows you to be creative in yourself. Exactly, bro. Because <laughs> I think that's a big inhibitor when it comes to a lot of people wanting to be the best version of themselves. They a little, they care a little too much about what other people think. It's hard though, and they don't really want to attack their insecurities and that uncomfortable feeling enough. Like if you just I don't like, attack that bitch, that bitch going to be bigger and bigger and bigger, man. So. I went to a TED Talk. I forgot her name. I'm going to send it to you. Make sure you reference it. This is a great video, and I encourage everybody to watch it. This girl, for 100 days, she was really great. She's a YouTuber. Um, she came to, I saw her live. She, for 100 days, did something uncomfortable. Every day she did something uncomfortable to the point where they, like, someone sponsored her, like, this, like, big-ass brand to, like, make her jump off a building or something. It, like, got that big. It was 100 days on YouTube of doing something uncomfortable. You can look it up. And, like, it started off with, like, dancing in public. 
dancing at the BART station, you know, like literally getting a Brazilian wax because like she would never do that or like going and kissing a stranger, like just something that makes you uncomfortable because she was always and she, she became a TED talker. Her biggest fear was talking to people, public speaking, and she became a fucking TED talker from this experience. Fucking crazy. So you never know what the fe- never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. That's <laughs> the you just gave me some crazy bro, shit right now. That's from a Cinderella story, the movie. The but like, it fuck? makes sense, right? It like, does. your fear of like what the outcome's gonna be will hold you back from probably being like the biggest, baddest, whatever that may be. And you'd you'd be so surprised out of the millions and millions of people that suffer from the same insecurities and oh, shit yeah. that you do, bro. Because damn near to the point where like. It's so funny to me because when I'd go out and shit, when I would go talk to, when I would go to the gym and I'd be buying like, let's just say a water bottle or I would go to the gas station, right? I will literally ha- spark conversation where before I check out or something, like go get my water bottle from the gas station or something, I'd be like, hey, how are you doing? How's yeah. your day going? Like, it's busy, huh? Like s- small talk with them. And it's so funny them getting caught off guard. I know. And being like, oh fuck, someone's talking to me. Yeah. Like, cause they're in their shell. They're like, Okay, uh, this is what you, they ring it, and then they check you out, and then they and that's the, their comfort zone because they kind of yeah. just want to get their job done and do their thing. But when someone talks to them, you're like, oh, they do also feel that like shy inside. You would be so surprised from Bro. people that you fucking check out items with every single day when you go to, to the same starbucks that person that checks your stuff out is probably dumbass shy bro hella shy I, you would never know dude i can't tell you how many actual like youtuber tiktokers people that i've not met are like silent these like big time comedians are like silent in public yeah it's weird because we're all human being at the day at the end of the day so it's like to that going back to that story that literal, her career has become a TED talker and her, it all started with her, her fear of like public speaking and doing something that made her uncomfortable every day. And then that's what it led to. Now she's like influencing other people. So you never know what you're missing out on yourself if you don't let yourself be your the best version of yourself. Really be the best you, attack those insecurities and just stop giving a fuck. Man. I swear to God, moral of the story, don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. On that note, TDP. If you're listening, you can watch us on YouTube.com slash The Dima Podcast and stream us on all platforms at The Dima Podcast. We love you very much. Happy Monday. We out. We out.